1945 and this is 1995. In the 18th century, the look was almost dandyish. Bright red jackets so the general could identify his troops on the battlefield and know where to move them. But now this is the 20th century and today the British Army launches its new collection of high-tech clothing for the combat troops of the 21st century. <laughs> We've got a very fine professional army. We give it very good equipment, very expensive weapon systems, and in order, in order to optimize the soldier himself, we're very keen that he too should be clothed in the best possible high-tech, state-of-the-art clothing and equipment. He will perform much better in this range of clothing than if we just gave him any old bit of kit, and it, it justifies the soldier and the equipment he's given. stems from the dissatisfaction with combat clothing that was evident after the Falklands campaign. Uh, it wasn't waterproof enough, it was, or, or it, it wasn't breathable, and therefore you was wet inside as outside when it rained. It was too heavy um, uh, and un uncomfortable, not, not warm enough. We started by, by realising that what was actually needed was a set of clothing that would take the soldier from hot to cold with the minimum of weight and the lowest bulk, so you could actually have it all with it. We looked at all the leisure wear, um, fashion garments. We also looked at what soldiers bought for themselves, um, which quite often um, is what he wants. Lightweight. It's thin, it's durable, and it keeps you warm. You're doing some fairly delicate manoeuvring there. Are these gloves useful for you? Well, yeah, you can get good grip, so you're not slipping about. Uh, in the wet, the grip will stay the same. Plus, when it's full of mud, which it often gets, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have confidence to do my job as quick as I can without gloves on. This kit is actually designed better for females than the other kit was. It fits better. The fleece, we've never had the actual DPM fleece uh, yeah. issue before, which is a good piece of kit, uh, which is to keep you warm, a lot warmer. Uh, Did you have to buy your own before you got issued with this one? Yes, a lot of the lads used to buy their own. This hole that you've got in the uh, cuff of your jumper, what's that all about? It's to do with the fleece, the actual fleece itself. Right. It just keeps the fleece down, keeps you warm. Cleverly thought out. Yeah. You've got, what, layer on layer? I mean, you called it, what was it, the onion well, the, skin suit? The soldiers called it an onion skin suit because they can take off items or layers as they require or choose for particular combat or climatic conditions. We still have to use specialist clothing for subarctic and arctic conditions. The taxpayer is certainly getting them value for money in this uniform. Um, 38 and a half million is the sort of price we're going to pay over three years to bring it into service. These are large and significant orders and in fact one of the reasons why it's, we're taking three years to introduce it is to make sure that we can get that pace properly both for industry and ourselves to achieve the, the right quality uh, and, the right, and the right production rates. On testing it they've taken a lot in from other regiments. They've obviously offered them um, uh, different things about the design of the kit and they've actually put it into the kit that's been issued. Tracy, is this a good bit of kit for a woman's army? It certainly is, but I believe it's been described as being sexy. Well, there are many words that would describe this kit. Sexy is definitely not one of them. Are you going to protect the nation wearing that piece of kit? Oh, yeah, I reckon. <laughs>